Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Rule the Waves as the United States, episode number 25, which corresponds with the year. So I guess we do move more or less the pace of one episode per year, or yeah, one year per episode, I guess it, <clears throat> it's the same either way. But the big question on everyone's mind, and as you can see I've already been looking at it, is the Ticonderoga, which at present is still 18 inches of glory. And we're considering changing this around and making it slightly less. And I have to say, I think that is what I'm going to do. So I have an idea now. I have a game plan. A lot of people were saying, go ahead and do it. Build like the most beefiest, largest ship you can. And I still think that there's room for that. But I have a great idea about doing it and it is going to be a second ship class to come so what i'm going to do is switch this to 16 inch guns we're going to add the half center line superimposed triple turret the usual configuration which is still pretty good i mean still nice to look at we can probably drop this down to eight guns per side now that we're dealing with uh lighter caliber more I don't know, I'm actually gonna do this really weird thing for the first time where I do nine per side, which is what I want. It's actually like the sweet spot. So we're up to 12 here, we're gonna go to four here, we're gonna go to 10. Let's go to 110 on the rounds, so this thing basically never has a problem with that. And we already have 14 inch turrets, which is amazing, so we don't really need to go any bigger there. And the torpedo defense is all good. Everything is looking good on this. So then we can just drop it down a little bit. We just want enough size to, wow, is that, that's a, that's a big jump, 80. Um, we just want enough uh, available to move the fire control. <clears throat> so if I went down to eight guns per side, I could actually drop this to 45,000. What's the cost difference? One, five, six. What? Is, uh, am I seeing this correct? I believe I'm seeing this correct. 157, increasing it, 156. Alrighty then, we will not be <laughs> dropping that last amount. Let's see, is this true here as well? That's so weird. This is like a, a weird, like it, it really likes 40, 45,100. All right, fine. So we'll do the nine guns per side. And uh, I mean, we can't get this, I'm sure. Might as well do something with this. How much does turret top take? Cause I, w I mean, 4.5 is pretty darn good, but how much does it cost to go up? Cannot do it, I have to go up again. We're up to 158. Well, I don't think 158 is worth it for the half inch because it's not likely to ever play a role. I don't think it'll be a big deal. I mean, turrets do get hit, but and especially with four of them, we wanna make sure our turret is pretty beefy, but it is at 14 inches, so. I think I just really like this design. I, f I feel like we're fine here. I can bring this up even, but <laughs> I don't even know if it's necessary. Okay, we'll bring the conning tower up to 11 inches. Or I could drop it way down and get another round per gun. No, but then we can't afford the advanced director in terms of weights, uh, you know, tonnage remaining. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this. We could add a second set of torpedoes though which I do like. Yeah, these are 23 each, so that's 48. This should be enough. Oh, this is uh, surface mounted. We don't need surface mounted, we'll just do the eight, nine. And obviously only one. Okay, so 28 should be enough room for improved direct, uh, advanced director. Perfect. I'm pretty sure it is. 
<laughs> I'm doubting myself a little bit, but if for some reason we messed up, we'll just take the rounds per gun down and we'll add like massive torpedoes to this thing, which is weird, but... Or, I mean, we could actually delete the two torpedoes to add it back. Okay, yeah, yeah, perfect. So this is the Tycho, and I'm really happy with her. I think that it's it's a she's a great ship. The 16 inch, the quality one 16 inch guns. Um, the only thing which is better than this is the quality one 17 inch guns. In terms of damage, I think 16 inches we have to remember is incredible already. I mean, sure 17 and 18 or more, but usually you don't even build 17 or 18. And if you're wondering, I'm still going to build one last massive ship class. So that's yet to come. So don't uh, don't panic. This is a behemoth, but <clears throat> one mightier than it is yet to come. So six ninety seven per month. Oh, jeez. Never mind. <laughs> I don't know why we designed it. <laughs> we have no money. <laughs> so okay, we've built it though. I mean, in my head, it's built. We just need to wait for the money to build it. All right, so let's wait for the money to build it. And we might get some technology which reduces the cost of things, hopefully. Uh, and if that happens, well, great. In fact, in the meantime, what we can do is, what is the ship that is most recently built? The U-70? Did this see action, though? I don't want to... I don't want to put them into reserve fleet if they've seen action. It's like, these I don't want to put into reserve fleet. I'm going to put these into reserve fleet, though. It'll be okay. And... Grand Rapids are my Southeast Asia one. I can't put them in reserve fleet in Southeast Asia, actually. So Galveston's are like the oldest one now, even though they're not as old as the Grand Rapids. Actually, we're going to need to refit some of these ships too. If these are out from 1918, they're going to need a refit for sure. Let's just do that right away. Wait, what? Open for rebuild. Okay, good. So this is probably not going to be a big change. Ah, the six-inch guns. That's what I'm waiting for. Okay, well, let's wait. I think we're going to get it. I have a feeling it's going to show up any second now. The Bennies. Still haven't got a chance to use these, and I'd still like to. So let's open them for rebuild and just save them as is. There's no, nothing has changed here, so let's just get these to stay exactly as they are. Uh, update their time. The Great Lakes, 1919, 1918, so yeah, we already talked about these. Um, Cunningham, 1920, well, that's okay. And this is 1921, the invader. I could build a lot more invaders as well. Uh, we didn't get an invasion where the invaders were, so maybe they don't work quite the way I, I, I was hoping. Their only point is strategic. I mean, we should be sending them, honestly, they need to be sent not into Northeast Asia. They need to be sent into Northern Europe. <clears throat> That's honestly what they should be doing. And may they can't, uh, destroyers cannot raid, but they can just sit there and we can cancel all battles while they blockade. So <laughs> that's the, the theory. And we have um, the Germans as our allies now. Of course, we have to remember that. So if we go to war with the, well, the Japanese, it wouldn't be a big deal. But if we go to war with the British, that's the expected endgame enemy. Okay, so keep pushing on. Russia, security, no. I don't care about Russia. I can fight them or not. It doesn't really matter. And there's the weight savings on armor, which is going to help the, the Tycho. Okay, better damage control. Okay, good. I'm not going to be, I'm not disappointed by that. All these improvements are, you know, it's just incremental improvements. Now, wait a second. 15 inch guns. Are you guys already. Okay, quality one. We still don't have director. Yeah, I didn't think so. Because it'll actually tell you if you design it without using this and you have it, it'll tell you. By the way, you should probably do that. You should probably add that in. All right, so let's look at our lightnings then. Just look at everyone. 14. Quality 1, Mount Rainiers, 13, Quality 0. This is interesting, gun data. 
21.2, 21 something, 46. So the 12, quality one 12 inch guns appear to be better in every way. 24, 5, 21, 2, yeah, and this was like 5 point whatever, and this was 22. Wow. So the 12 inch guns would do less damage, but we would get more, uh, we'd have much better penetration profiles. They would or would not, they would, they would fire faster. The 12 inch guns is this, uh, 13 and 14 are in their own tier. 15, 16, 17, 18 are in the last tier. Then it's 13, 14, and then below that, I think it's 11, 12. So there's really something to be said about lowering the Mount Rainier down to 12-inch guns, basically making it like a battle cruiser. I mean, <laughs> and, uh, making it like a, uh, what is it, uh, an armored cruiser, a heavy cruiser, kind of making it like a heavy cruiser. I mean, it's still going to be a battle cruiser. 12-inch guns are big. Think about it in World War II. When uh, a ship had 12-inch guns, it was still something to be very afraid of. So... I think we'll just hold off on improving the Mount Rainier, and if we wait long enough, and we can get the quality one 13 inch guns, we'll do that. Otherwise, we might do a whole refit. Oops. Okay, you already have your better guns and the von Steuben. Same situation there. Let's send these guys into mothball state. Oh, we can't because they're in the wrong spot. But we can just move them away from there. Let's move them over to the West Coast. And the Caribbean is actually an okay location. We have one over here. We probably want all of these guys to move to the West Coast. This, these will now be a West Coast fleet. So we have the Lightnings, which will move to the Caribbean. And the newest, the U70s, will stay on the East Coast. Good, I like that. Good distribution. Uh, you will also move to the west coast. There we go. Okay, very good. Um, yeah, these ones in Southeast Asia, what do we want? Okay, uh, what's the maintenance? 180. What is it on these destroyers? Oh wait, per tonnage, probably it's better to have the Grand Rapids there than our invader class because the invader class is so light. That, okay, 200, so five is a thousand. Times six, 30. So 30 times five, 30 times six, 180. Identical, they are identical, basically. This one is out of the Grand Rapids is by 200 tons, slightly better um, tonnage per maintenance. So we get slightly more tons per maintenance cost out of the Grand Rapids, which means that they are indeed the right choice to stay. And we'll move all of you back to the West Coast. Okay, and I don't know what the tonnage we need is here. Uh, okay, it's 14 thousand which is still more than two of these ships i believe but we could just shift one just move one of these up to northeast asia and we'll end up having too many here in southeast asia as well maybe i shouldn't penny pinch too much but 20 we only need twenty-one thousand actually so yeah well, okay let's move a lot back Twenty-one thousand is four of them so these are all good to move back to the west coast as well. Just to reduce the maintenance cost. It is 30,000 per ship. I mean, it's some it's it's enough that we should we should do it. Now our monthly balance is up to 16 million. Good lord. Is that from this? That's 4 million. Oh my gosh. Okay. You know what? We really really got to be doing these reserve fleet things. Not for you, I know, and we're mothballing you guys when you get back, and you know, we'll probably mothball the Philippines as well. They probably should become, in fact, a West Coast ship as well. It's just gonna be, it's gonna be really derogatory. I'm on the West Coast, but it's gonna become like a derogatory thing. <laughs> the uh, good ships are on the East Coast, and the, the it's, it'll be like Navy, Navy slang among the U.S. sailors. 
Oh, are you an East Coast ship or a West Coast ship? <laughs> oh, um, we're in East Coast. Yeah, but you're headed to the West Coast soon. Oh boy, them's fighting words. Uh, the Philippines has got the 14-inch guns. It's, uh, this is a pretty good ship. It's not really battle tested. Let, let's give, let's keep this one on the. It'll remain an East Coast ship for just a tad bit longer. That's what I say. Okay, so next. Symbolic concessions? No. I'm fine with a war with Japan. It'll be over by Christmas. <laughs> okay, we have some in the Caribbean. I don't want to reserve these. I will reserve or even mothball the Mount Rainiers. And... I should reserve the Philippines. I don't even know if they... They probably haven't even fought. <clears throat> and with this kind of money, it's now time to finally start construction. Well, let's go back to the design of the Tyco one last time. Because if we open it, we have a, a little bit of weight savings. We could drop this down. But it still increases the cost. So, uh, yeah, I guess we'll increase the rounds per gun again. That is incredible. The conning tower is already 10 inches, so I don't see any reason why not. So this is going to be a very, very durable ship. It is not, not quickly going to be running out of ammunition. I am, like, in the back of my mind, by the way, I'm keeping them... I've been thinking about, oh, wow. That's really not that big of a deal. Holy cow, we can get 22 knots almost for free. I mean, I'm considering it really cheap. That's worth it. I think that's worth it. 105 rounds per gun is still a lot. Can we, oops, can we get, how much do we need? Ah, uh, no, Conning Tower is not gonna save us there. I like all the armor values, exactly where they are. Oh, geez. How many times can you redesign the same darn ship? Well, we need to start building it, right? Because as soon as we do, we'll get the better quality six inch guns so okay this is you this is who you are you're 22 knots which i think people will be very happy about a lot of people like the faster ships i don't usually like uh, care that much from my dreadnoughts dreadnoughts are not meant to be fast they're meant to sit in the line and fire so there it is and we'll start building some more of them we have the missouri and we have the liberator can I get one? Yeah, I can do this one as well. And I'll get one more. We have the Texas. People who may not even be still watching the series, but your ships got in eventually. <laughs> it's a miracle. And I know what the last class will be named, but uh, I don't need to put it up here. We'll keep it a mystery. And I can probably squeeze in some more, but I need a little bit more time. I'm looking at like getting six, seven, eight, quite a few. So we'll leave it at like this. We'll reserve some more fleet ships um, as soon as they get into the appropriate positions. Like you guys can reserve. Save me a little bit of money. You guys won't. You will. Oh, what's up with the... Yeah, so I didn't reserve all the other ships. Like, Galveston should be reserved. Wow, that was really helpful. The Great Lakes. Kind of my best light cruiser right now. <laughs> I won't reserve these. We'll keep these uh, in peak fighting condition. Um, and the Grand Rapids I can't do until we have them back. And all the destroyers can reserve, especially anything except for the Cunninghams. We'll do it this way. It has a lot of ships in the East Coast. So probably the Farraguts. Some of these destroyers need to go to Southeast Asia or West Coast, besides the invaders. Can't just be the invaders. I thought the, I thought the Bennings were over there. Did they get deployed on the wrong side? Well, the Farraguts have enough torpedoes that I think I'm going to send them to the west coast. 
so that it gives the West Coast Army, uh, Navy, I should say, some amount of torpedo protection, or not protection, but offensive capabilities. The Bennies are this really interesting ship where I'm not sure, I'm not really frankly sure where I should put them. You know what, the New Havens would be better on the West Coast. Well, they're actually kind of okay as like real fighting. Oh, the Farraguts are, so, ah, that's right. The Farraguts are my short ranged ships. So they're supposed to be the ones that deploy in all of the sea zones now. Okay, so we're gonna want, how many do we have? We have 23, I'm thinking of like a, maybe an 878, East Coast, Caribbean, West Coast. So eight are not gonna move at all. I hate that I have to do this. It's probably easier just to let them move back <laughs> and then just move them the next turn. Uh, less TDM. Okay, so then seven of them are going to stay, and then eight of them are going to go to the west coast. Wait. Sorry. Seven of them are going to just go to the Caribbean. Okay, because they're short range ships, so I can't move them. Oh, you can move them among the home ports. I think we already saw. So if I want fair goods, I do have to just move them directly into the Southeast Asia area if I want them there. And they are, I mean, they're decent. Three torpedoes. Okay, let's get the eight that I just sent there to move directly into the Southeast Asia area. And should I just send 10 there? I guess so. So there's enough, and I might even be able to pull that cruiser back. Okay, we're just, I'm just trying to... Basically, this is order of battle stuff. Um, we must safeguard our interests. I do want to fight them. Machinering advance, of course, as soon as we... Well, I mean, those are pretty steady throughout, but it did happen the moment we started building our Tycho. Okay, we'll have to see what happens with the Farraguts after the dust settles over here. Like I kind of feel like waiting in the Caribbean is the best case scenario for these because they can move very quickly anywhere we want from there. So let's do that. They need to be like on battle readiness in terms of time to deploy anywhere since once the war starts, we can't deploy them. Uh, yeah, anything, we'll take it. And we have money in the bank right now, so let's go ahead and build the next Tycho. Thomas Hudner. Okay. And you guys are in the Caribbean. You're now can go to reserve fleet. On story bins will be mothballed. <laughs> By all means, Italians, we don't really care. Hmm. So do I have some here that we could put on reserve fleet? And we'll do that. Um, reserve fleet is here. What's our tonnage requirements looking like over here? We have just over, so that's about right. And that's just about right. Okay, good, so no moving people in and out. Whatever's there is looking good. The Gallicens are already on reserve fleet, that's good. Great Lakes, I'm gonna keep active. Um, the fair goods that are here, I feel like I should also reserve fleet them. And the Bennies are gonna get reserve fleet. 300,000 for that. I think the New Havens as well. We're almost positive. Okay, that's good. I like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, the invaders <laughs> could probably be mothballed. I mean, their point is not to fight at all, so let's just mothball them. 
And we're almost positive. <laughs> they basically just paid for almost a new battleship. And the game's over. We'll play on. Probably should take a moment to look at the almanac now that I mean, with the game quote unquote being over. So we end with the highest naval budget, but this is not really our own doing. We have seven dreadnoughts compared to Britain's 27, but I, that actually makes me want to fight them because they probably don't have very good quality ones. I mean, well, 233 to 750, this is a pretty big discrepancy. 14 battle cruisers, 17, and theirs, ours are barely bigger than theirs. It's pretty scary. Um, and they have two more that are uh, combined, like are like 45 each. Wow, those are big ships. Now note, if we do go to war with them, Germany is going to be helping us. So that's nice. I don't know why anybody still has armored cruisers. We have a lot of light cruisers, so probably too many. And destroyers, well, don't really look at this. This is uh, because of the invader class. Submarine-wise, we are way behind anyone else, except for the British, which makes them, in fact, like the prime target for war. Okay, prestige, uh, yeah, just whatever. The middle comment. Battleship. And tensions are certainly rising. British are now able to build 18 inch guns, that's scary. We'll build our last ship, our last Tycho of the class. I mean, okay, I'm not sure if she's the last one or not. Constitution. I think we'll get one more in. Yeah, I think we can. No, especially if the we get the industrial stuff. Look at that minesweeper. Thank you for showing me that intelligence. A spy. Uh, don't really want to go to war with them again. I'll just handle it quietly. Better submarines. Not a big deal. Okay, well, that's a lot of tension. So we're going to unreserve fleet everyone. Everyone to active. Isn't there a mobilization? Good. That is nice. So I have to, I just need to remember that button. Oh my good God, that's a lot. Okay, but this is probably good. No, we just started. No, we just started building our Tyco. I don't want it scrapped that quickly, especially because there's not really a lot of people who are going to suffer. We are the only people who would suffer for it. So, we go to war. We're not at war yet, but it's we're. I mean, as close as you can get, and it's with the British. This is going to be a big one. So let's start deploying forces as well. Uh, yes, we want a huge force in the Caribbean. In fact, I want, uh, okay, so let's figure out where we do want ships. We want everywhere, gosh. We want them in Northeast Asia, so we can take this colony. We want a whole bunch in Southeast Asia, so we can take those. We want them on the West Coast, so we can take this. We want them on the East Coast, so we can take that. Britain, this is why it sucks to play as the British, because the American, you have so much to lose from the Americans, and these are all home sea zones. So we really don't want to move too much any, anywhere, because we don't want too much in Southeast Asia. We want it to take stuff in, on the West Coast. We want it to take stuff on the East Coast. Boy, this makes me, like, so those, it must be horrible. I mean, it, it was horrible to play as the British. They are really tough. How do you keep that much force projection away from your home sea zone i mean geez it's just must it was really tough but looking at this you can really see why how do they how do they spare ships as much as i can spare on the west coast they can't do it how do you i mean how do they even keep the three to one odds seems impossible southeast asia that, that's probably a place that they can reasonably fight for and right now they are 38 points. Great Britain, 15 points here. Okay, so we'll definitely outnumber them in Northeast Asia. But let's draw the invasion 
of British Columbia first, and then we'll, we'll push on out. Okay, so next turn. And still no. Our 15-inch guns are better. Our 8-inch guns are superior. We don't have 6-inch guns, though. This is just a mystery to me how the U.S. can get through the end of the game, 1925, without ever getting better 6-inch guns, considering every one of my ships is using 6-inch guns. You'd have to expect that in real life, if I mean, if this was at all realistic, every effort of the Americans would be on getting better 6-inch guns or on using a different uh, gun caliber. But because the 6-inch gun happens to be a game cutoff for safely targeting destroyers, there's just no way we can get around using it. Yeah, so I think this will tip us over the top. Oh, budget and tension versus prestige. Well, I don't really care about prestige. This should tip us over the top. There it is. The US and Great Britain are now at a state of war. An enemy coastal raid? I guess this is okay because it should be so horrible for them. Okay, they declined. I will also accept this. They will probably decline. They did. And another one in an area where I don't really want to fight, but I have three pretty decent light cruisers here, so I will accept. If it is a battleship, I'm going to have to run, but we're starting at a pretty good point advantage anyway, just because they had to decline some big... I mean, those points are going to mean nothing come the end of the war. I'm pretty sure that... What the heck is this? Huh. Didn't know I could do that. Oh, no, I didn't want to do that. Yeah. Can you pop up again? No. So just don't play with this thing. Note to self. Son of a... Okay, there. We'll leave it as it is. It's worse than it was, but who cares? It's at least staying. Unknown. Oh my goodness. Uh, so if this is a... Uh, this is a really interesting situation because even if this is a um, Dreadnought, we're going to be able to fire at it. Here we go. Steady. She turned way too fast. Get in there. <gasps> She's not turning, so she must be the one. Or is it this one? It's hard to tell. Why, why we're getting hit? We got hit by a torpedo. Oh man, we're gonna lose the first one. I can see now. Okay, we need to detach the Puerto Rico. Let's try to do this. Uh, how bad is it? Not bad. Wow, not bad. You need to turn her away, though. I don't think that's actually a light cruiser. Puerto Rico's limiting flooding. 38, she's gonna make it, I think. Where's the nearest port? Close. We'll send her up towards the nearest port. And now we'll just control the Lake Erie and hope that the other ones can make do. It's surprising to me, actually, that the we're not actually landing any hits. Because we do have these 4-inch guns, and they are quality 1, yeah. So we would expect to be doing like pretty good work against these things. Okay, so we'll probably sink that one. She's down to zero. Amazing. Very good, very good. So this is good in the end. And I think that actually is a light cruiser. It is. Okay, two 6-inch guns. 10 4 inch guns, it's like the ideal target for our Lake Erie. And we're on the wind side, okay. Now we're targeting the correct target, good. And you know what? Cover your ears, by the way. Oh, it's out of arc. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. We need to get a little bit more ahead or point ourselves a little more port side. An unknown ship, but that's the same destroyer. 
getting some good hits in. 5,000 tons. And still working on that destroyer, too. Another two 8 inch shells. And that destroyer, how is that thing even still afloat? We must have punched so many holes in it. Okay, this is good. And that's the other destroyer. Oh yeah, yeah, we, we destroyed that. That destroyer is done for. And this one's actually probably already sinking. I just don't want this ship to have a bulkhead rupture or anything due to high speed. So we're gonna take it down to six, just to make sure she survives. Even with the situation, combat situation resolved as it is with us sinking all three of these and not losing the Lake Erie, it might be a loss. Because Lake Erie, I mean the, sorry, the Puerto Rico, this class ship, which I can't remember, the Grand Rapids is just much, much better uh, point-wise. So with our rear turret destroyed, let's our temporarily disabled, let's just go nose on, which is gonna reduce Oh, okay, we actually smothered the Rother class with another hit. Wow. Four four-inch guns. I mean, yeah, this is a decent one. Six above water torpedo tubes. It's a bit scary. Let's see if we can sink this destroyer. And we're hitting the CL now, which is the other escorting destroyer, which is good. Because she's the only one probably actually still alive. Let's fire torpedoes at this. Oh, very good. Cover your ears, here it goes. Boom, very loud. Oh, wow, it's a nice spread. So we had this discussion, I think, with somebody, I can't remember who it was, who was saying that torpedo mounts fire one torpedo per barrage, but I'm not having that effect, uh, same Apparently mine is if I, one mount will fire all of its torpedoes, unless that's what they were trying to say. And okay, they actually turned and weren't hit at all. The Rother class is now dead as well. And we need to turn and get our starboard torpedoes to face. <laughs> they just destroyed our, <laughs> good thing we launched anyway, right? Yeah, we can just uh, make a quick U-turn. Not, this thing's already going to go down anyway, but just to ensure defeat for the enemy. <laughs> Maybe ensure defeat for ourselves if we end up getting hit by a torpedo, but... Okay, let's not launch those yet. Okay, never mind, they're gone, they're done for. And we didn't lose a ship, so it ends up being a major victory. Fantastic. Ugh. Good news, everyone. Come away with a victory. And three ships down, which is important because for this war is going to come down to block. I think a lot of it's going to come down to blockading. Now, foreign tonnage, uh, foreign tonnage on foreign stations is at a huge negative, probably because both of these are now being repaired. <laughs> yep. So we'll have to move some ships over to Northeast Asia, but we'll do that on the next episode. So I'm going to wrap this video up here. We're at war with our, our arch nemesis. I don't think it'll be that big of a deal. I actually think this is not that difficult of an endgame fight. It's the United States. We control a lot of the territory that the United Kingdom has to defend. It's home water for us. I, I don't think, I mean, the ideal situation is if we end up conquering a lot of territory, maybe we can push a big battle fleet into Northern Europe still. But they have to contend with the Brit, uh, the Germans. The Germans are also fighting them, and we may, I mean, it's obviously very little goes on between, if they, if, if the three of us were in a real fight, obviously the Germans and the British Navy would just be obliterating each other. Assuming that the German fleet was willing to engage, but in this we'll see them sink like one or two ships of each other. It's like, oh, you know, a battleship sunk a light cruiser or something, so it won't be a big deal, but Okay, anyway, so I'll wrap it up. Thanks for watching, and until the next episode, take care.